Hey, it's Monday. That means it's time for our Monday Market Outlook. My name is Matthew Buckley. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Wealth Creation Investing. And uh, Eric King just uh, uh, got done speaking. And of course, he's starting to set up the Washington optics of our next fiscal pothole, fiscal gorge, whatever you want to call it, the debt ceiling uh, debate that's going to hit us in mid-February to uh, middle of March there. So the president, uh, being who he is, of course, is uh, already blaming Republicans, saying, uh, you know, if, if these guys are going to hold the United States state's creditworthiness hostage. Uh, they're the ones that are going to be responsible for our government default. It's just, if folks, you can't make this stuff up. And of course, uh, the press was kneeling in front of them. Wasn't, uh, not, uh, there wasn't even a softball question, folks. It was cotton balls. It's absolutely unbelievable. Of course, nobody uh, in the media brings up the fact that uh, back uh, in 2006, then Senator Barack Obama, of course, voted against raising the debt ceiling. Why? Bush was in office. And he railed against us spending more than we bring in. And I, I, Google it yourself, folks, or, or look at it on YouTube and, and see what uh, the then senator had to say about raising the debt ceiling. And it, you'll, it'll make you sick. Or actually, if you voted for the guy, it won't make you sick. You'll ignore it and say, well, that just doesn't mean anything. Uh, of course it, folks. So now we're heading for another train wreck here come in, uh, in March uh, or uh, middle of February. Uh, I'm going to be ready for it. The traders at Wealth Creation Investing and Tompkin Options are certainly going to be ready for it. We were ready for the fiscal cliff and solar model portfolios profit wildly based on the stupidity in Washington. And, and we're going to see that uh, again coming up here uh, on our flight schedule this week. Uh, today, not too much uh, on the really on the flight schedule. We have the Bernack speaking, but we know what the guy is going to say he's not going to come out with anything new, right? He's already given us an unemployment target of 6.5% and said he's going to keep printing money out of thin air uh, until unemployment gets down to that rate. Apparently, the guy needs to go back to Princeton because uh, the effects of all the other quantitative easing and the operation twisting and mortgage-backed securities and buying of treasuries has done nothing to lower the employment rate. But, uh, you know, uh, it's a, a wise Marine once told me, when in a hole, cease digging. Uh, we're just going to keep on digging and, and see if we dig harder. It's like Monty Python. Maybe if we ran away some more, it would really confuse the rabbit. Uh, Tuesday, we get a little more uh, into it, seeing some inflation numbers and also some retail sales numbers. Uh, Wednesday... Uh, seeing some uh, long-term purchases, cap utilization rate, industrial production. Also, the NAHB coming out w with its housing market index and also the Fed's uh, beige book. Get a look into their cliff notes. And then Thursday, a little more clarity into uh, what's going on with housing towards the end of last year with building permits and obviously weekly unemployment claims, housing starts, and the Philly Fed. And then rounding out the week on Friday, we really don't have too much. But the, the, the biggest things going on this week uh, are earnings. Right, this week is full of bank earnings. We're going to see Goldman Sachs. Uh, we're going to see. We saw Wells Fargo last week, um, but I, I really believe on Wednesday they start in earnest. So let's take a, a look real quick at the flight schedule and pull up Wednesday in earnings. We're going to see regional banks. We're going to see big banks. Yeah, U.S. Bank Corp, BNY uh, coming out. Let me see when. Uh, I think Goldman Sachs. Uh, what's on the 17th? American Express, Bank of America, Fist Third. PNC. Um, so obviously this week is big financial week. State Street, SunTrust. Uh, so a big week uh, for financial uh, financials reporting. Wells Fargo reported last week and kind of uh, underwhelmed their net interest margin, which is uh, that margin. So they borrow money. There are banks. What else do banks do? They borrow money from other people. They borrow money and then lend it out uh, for people to buy homes and stuff like that. And their net uh, net margin interest actually went do uh, down. So that's not uh, that, that's not a good harbinger of things to come. But here's what I think is going to uh, happen with uh, banks and their earnings: is they're pulling a little bit of an apple this time around. I think they're under promising and they might over deliver here. A lot of banks recently have talked about cost cutting. Uh, J.P. Morgan and a lot of the heavies getting rid of heavies actually. Actually, for managing director level and above, starting to starting to thin out uh, the upper ranks, uh, which is funny because when you think about it, why pay uh, a guy a couple million dollars a year and an additional couple million dollars a year and a bonus when I can get a uh, a 26 year old MBA right out of Wharton who can more or less do the same job if not better? So the banks are starting to wake up to the economic realities. But recently, they've also announced Uncle Sam or or asked Uncle Sam to get out of their their back pocket. Right, uh, the stress tests uh, going pretty well. 
well. But more importantly, they want to start buying back shares, uh, and they need Uncle Sam's uh, permission. A lot of them do, since they got it thrown into that whole uh, too big to fail thing. Other news today: Apple really taking it on the chin. This article in the Wall Street Journal: Apple cuts orders for iPhone parts. They're starting to see soft iPhone 5 sales and uh, regular viewers uh, at Top Gun Options and also at uh, Wealth Creation Investing know uh, that this was coming. Why? Because I said it was coming. As soon as Apple hit north of right here, as soon as Apple hit north of 700, uh, I said sell. I said Apple's done with. It's becoming commoditized. The Amazons, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Samsungs, they're in a race to the bottom and it's going to be a pricing war just like the airlines. Okay, instead of charging 200 bucks to get from Miami to JFK, I'll charge 190. Oh, you're going to charge 190? Well, I'll charge 180. And it's going to be a race to the bottom. I mean, we have Amazon Kindles that are ad supported. Um, so, and also with kind of uh, some really ill timed uh, uh, announcement or, or information come out that they're already looking at a potential iPhone 6. Really? People haven't even digested, or, or people were still kind of waiting or deciding to buy an iPhone 5. You think they're going to run out and buy an iPhone 5 when now there might be an iPhone 6 coming out? Absolutely not. So I think it's over for Apple, folks. I think 500 is the beachhead. Obviously, you can see the gap down today. We actually put on a, a bull put spread down 10% below where we are right now. Apple's got, uh, App, uh, Apple's got earnings coming up, and I put it right outside of a, a one standard deviation mover, or actually just outside of a historical move uh, out of Apple to the downside. Again, Apple usually tends to under-promise and over-deliver. Last year, they didn't. Uh, it was the second quarter uh, or third quarter when they really under-delivered, and the stock took a hit but then got airborne again on the iPhone 5 news. I think this time it's different, folks. I think uh, Apple's uh, in trouble here, but I still put a uh, bull put spread on underneath it to, to see if we can catch a bid here. Uh, what you're looking at right now is our uh, weekly options model portfolio, brand new at Top Gun Options. That, not brand new. It's actually one day, one month old today. We launched it, uh, or our first trades expired on December 14th. It's January 14th. Here we are, folks. Uh, we put two trades on a week, risking no more than $10,000. Uh, so if I fell and hit my head, the most I'd lose in this model portfolio is $10,000, and look at where we are. Year to date, we're up about 7600 bucks. But here's the uh, here's the kicker. Since uh, uh, December 14th, uh, this model portfolio has made over $18,710. Let me just show you a little quick uh, public math there. What's that? $18,700. We'll just uh, round around there. Uh, divided by the five weeks that we've uh, been airborne. That's $3,740 a week <clears throat> Excuse me, in model portfolio profits in our weekly options model portfolio. As you can see, Apple is our bronze met or silver medal uh, winner here with just north of uh, $4,100 in profit. Having an absolute blast in this service. We have another Apple uh, bear call spread on right now that's up. We put this on a couple days ago. It's already up 90%, $1,300 gain uh, in three days. And then we have a, a, a GLD iron condor on that's uh, up about 6%. We put this on Friday, up 140 bucks. Having an absolute blast trading weekly options, folks. If you don't know what they are or you're interested in learning about them or giving us a test flight, go to topgunoptions.com, and you can hover over services and go down to weekly options, or you can just go to this URL, topgunoptions.com slash weekly dash options. Okay, topgunoptions.com slash weekly dash options. And you can scroll down and click on the button that says take a test flight. And you can get airborne for two weeks and see how we do it here. Like I said, seeing some uh, absolutely superior performance in our model portfolio here, up uh, $7,000, $7,600 uh, in about, what, 12 trading, eh, less than that, maybe 10, 12 trading days. Um, so a lot of stuff going on uh, this week, folks, uh, in housing, seeing a lot of earnings, seeing some int uh, uh, some uh, potential, uh, uh, you know, inflation uh, numbers and reports coming out. So it's going to, we're, we're starting to get into the heart of earnings season, starting to get into the thick of it. I'm looking forward to it. Got a primary live trade brief tomorrow morning at 0900 with uh, my primary live traders over at Topkin Options. It's going to be a, a great week. That model portfolio is doing exceptionally well. Uh, as well, that one is up over $12,000 a year to date. So that's about $1,000 a day in uh, model portfolio profits over there in our primary live trade brief model portfolio. Okay, got to get going, got to trade. That's what we do here at WCI and TGO. So happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. And uh, hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys uh, in our new weekly option service this Friday at 1 in our live trading session. We'll see you.